Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. Pittsburgh has been hard at work this offseason upgrading its interior offensive line at guard in particular. We think and expect this team will make some moves to tackle as well. What about center? Mason Cole signed last year to a three-year contract, had a good 2022 season with Pittsburgh. Could the team look to upgrade him? Potentially, but I just want to acknowledge that I thought he had a good 2022 season as that anchor in the middle for that Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. And so I want to look at a handful of clips today just to show some of the technical ability and just Cole kind of getting the job done. I thought against um, the Raiders in week 16 in particular had a really good game there. You see him against that big nose tackle, Andrew Billings, who I won at Pittsburgh to sign as a run stuffer. That did not happen, but you see him here uh, with Cole using his hands well and burying Billings here off the line. Unfortunately, pass not complete, just uh, maybe miscommunication or just a, a missed throw from Kenny Pickett. But you see Cole winning this early. And I think overall in Pat Myers system, the offensive line coach of Pittsburgh, is you see the center be in more 1v1 situations. The guards were helping the tackles more this year in 2022 than they were in past seasons under different coaches. And so your center better be able to win in pass protection. And although this is not against a premier pass rusher, you still see uh, Cole winning, keeping that pocket clean for Kenny Pickett. Now we'll look at this clip later in that same game against the Raiders. And here is Mason Cole, of course, the Steelers center. You see him against number 93, a bit better pass rusher here, executing the snatch and trap technique and not of knocking the, the arms down of the pass rusher number 93 and uh, burying him, sending him to the ground. And again, keeping that pocket clean for Kenny Pickett. The interior offensive line, as Pat Myers says, they're responsible for the depth of the pocket. The offensive tackles are responsible for the width of the pocket. And it's a really clean pocket here for Kenny Pickett. So watching Cole be able to knock those arms down, that gets the defensive tackle off balance, and you bury him here to finish. We'll take a look at it from the aerial view. Might be able to see the technique here just a bit better and you see Cole engage and then right there knock the arms down send the D tackle flying and it creates the uh, clean pocket there unfortunately another incompletion not showing great results from the uh, overall offensive play uh, with between Kenny Pickett and Deontay Johnson but good reps here from Mason Cole now we'll go all the way back to week one, the overtime win over the Cincinnati Bengals and Pittsburgh for years have been a Pretty terrible and miserable running back tight end screen team. But here is one that works at Gentry's longest catch of the year on this tight end. Kind of throwback screen that nearly puts Pittsburgh in the end zone. But watching Mason Cole, the center, him get out in space. Him and Shaku McCorf are doing a good job here um, to get in the way. You see Cole kind of on the back side of this one. Take out that defender who might have and probably would have tracked down the uh, relatively slow-footed Zach Gentry. But Cole... Really out there, I think that's the safety Von Bell, who certainly would have made the tackle, I think, on uh, on Zach Gentry. And so you see him out here in space, a couple of linemen who can move. A nice job here by Cole. Not the world's best athlete, but good effort, good angle, um, good vision, and one of the very few successful screens. We'll look at it from the aerial view for you guys. And, of course, there's Mason Cole in week one. Now, he played hurt most of the year with a foot injury. He was really tough, and so that's one of those uh, intangibles that you can't, you know, grade or see on a stat sheet or anything like that. Um, I think he was, you know, relatively healthy here. He might have been hurt in the summer. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but point is, this guy really gutted it out throughout the season, and you see him here with a good angle, finding work, kind of peeling back, not getting called for it, thankfully, um, on, on taking out Von Bell. So that is Mason Cole. And one fun fact here, by the way, tight ends coach Alfredo Roberts, who is right here, I think he like hurts his hamstring on this play. You kind of see it, he falls out of frame. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just one little sidebar there. But a great rep overall for this team and for Mason Cole. Skipping ahead to late in the season against the Baltimore Ravens, and you watch Cole here as a run blocker. You saw the Steelers the second half of the year become a much better you know, rushing attack, run blocking team, winning at the first level, creating that first level movement for Najee Harris or Jalen Warren. And you see Cole here fold the defensive tackle. That is uh, Jones, number 98. And so 
You see Cole get that good movement, creates that lane for Najee Harris to cut back off of Cole's hip, little hurdle, and it's a good gain down here in the red zone. So, you know, Cole, really the entire offensive line, much better run blockers the back half of the year, and it created lanes like that for Najee Harris. The last clip I'll show is a double team from Mason Cole and left guard Kevin Dotson against number 97 versus the Atlanta Falcons. And again, you see that first level movement here on a really high-end player in Grady Jarrett, uh, one of the Falcons' best players overall on that team. And so you see the combination on the double team here, these guys getting square shoulder to shoulder, um, you know, probably cleaner than what it was in week one as these guys were still trying to figure out uh, how they work together. And that's those tandem blocks, those combination blocks with Cole, with Dotson, and you really see that movement created overall um, for Benny Snell in this case. And you really get a good sense of that lane that opens up here from the aerial view. You can really see the movement that Dotson and Cole create here on 97. Again, that's Grady Jarrett, a good player, probably a better penetrator and pass rusher than he is run defender, but still a very talented player overall. And so you see Jarrett here, lined up basically at the 45-yard line, and he's getting pushed back, you know, three yards deep. And Snell just follows behind, plows ahead, and it's a gain of about five yards. And so, um, like Mason Cole's, you know, body of work overall, again, you know, not healthy for probably the entire season, essentially, um, but gutted it out, you know, was consistent, was technical, uh, snaps were good, you know, ID, scanning, and I think, in Meyer's system, there was more put on the center's plate than there was in past years, and you needed a good, competent center. The Steelers had one in 2022. So for his future, does his team draft a center? I mean, there's no backup right now at the least, so there's something to be done there. At least nobody uh, of note, Ryan McCollum, has you know got a couple hundred, well, about 100 snaps in the NFL with Detroit a few years ago, but I'm getting lost here in the weeds. Uh, point is, we'll have to see what happens at center, but Cole, I think, is done a nice job, but I have no problem with him being the Steelers starting center in 2023. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I'd appreciate that. Again, thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon.